process leading up to it. Was it a situation where, you know, your experience is everybody in Austin was on board, partially on board, a little divided? What was the culture of acceptance for Charlie when he was first hired? Well, you had a group of big money donors who worked to make sure that Matt Brown was out and and so they could go talk to Nick Saban. And and then that was completely torpedoed by Matt Brown's ability to convince then athletic director Steve Patterson to keep him uh, after it was sort of agreed behind the scenes that uh, between you know big money donors and the school president that Mac would be let go, and then it turned ugly. Obviously, people remember it was there was 24 hours where it was uncertain as to whether Mac was going to keep coaching or or not, and then. The big money guys threatened to pull all their money out of the university. Patterson had to fire Max. And then a, a bit of an awkward search began with Steve Patterson running it. He, didn't, he did not include the big money guys. He hired Charlie. You know, he, he hired his own man. And, and so, you know, I think people were hopeful that Charlie would, would be, you know, their, their answer as football coach. But um, – the, the, the fan base has been divided really for about seven years. And, and so that's why this situation now is so critical. You know, when you think about uh, that Texas job and the way it just went down, as you just described it, was there anyone clamoring for it? Any of the big names clamoring to go to Texas? Because a decade ago, there's anybody would clamor to go there. Right. I mean, I, I think that the big money donors, obviously thought they had a shot at Saban. Now, whether that is true or not. Yeah, but did um, Saban want to go? Did he want to be there? Was this something well, that I Nick think, Saban was saying, I, I, I don't want to leave Alabama because I want to go to Texas. You know what I mean? Right. No, I th- I, but I think there was, I think he, you know, Saban waited to, to sign his, his, his new agreement um, with Alabama until, their, until that Friday night when Mac Brown met with the school president and the AD. So, you know, uh, who knows? But the bottom line is they are now in a situation where I don't think the president or the athletic director thought that uh, that he would be in this situation, and now here they are. Yeah, so where are they? You tell us. I mean, we know that Charlie Strong is not going to be coaching there next year, but it looks like he's going to coach against TCU. I mean, we should probably get that out of the way. He's going to coach the next game, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that when you – I mean, I think they're going to let go of Charlie Strong. I think they're going to fire him. Um, I think the president and the athletic director think that it's the right thing to wait until after the TCU game. But, you know, when you know, especially after Kansas happened, I mean, that was the worst-case scenario. I think the president and the athletic director were looking for every reason to bring Charlie Strong back, and they were planning on bringing him back. I was told all he had to do was beat Kansas and play close against TCU, even at six and six, and and he would keep his job. And then and then Kansas happened. So, you know so, you know, you have this situation where like now they're scrambling because they were planning on bringing Charlie back. So you've got this uh disconnect, which always happens at Texas in these situations. Yeah, but Chip, got... Chip, let me hop in for a sec. You say that they're scrambling, and we're talking to Chip Brown, who covers the uh, Texas Longhorns Insider for HornsDigest.com, and he's joined us before, and we appreciate him here on Tiki and Tierney, CBS Sports Radio. I mean, a program that big should never scramble at this point, because if they came up to the, if they, if they determined that as long as you beat Kansas, and as long as you're competitive against TCU, there are already defined parameters that tell me that they're not so sure that, that Charlie Strong is going to be back. So to say that they're scrambling now, it seems like they had nothing lined up for plan B, which is egregiously neglectful. Right. That, but that's what you're dealing with, with a first-time school president and an athletic director who was a lawyer a year ago who was brought in to help. You know, he is a big-money guy himself, but he's got no experience as an athletic director. He was brought in to help sort of, bring the big money guys back together after the failed uh, athletic directorship of, of Steve Patterson. So Texas is, you're right, they are, they are football royalty, and yet they've got first-time guys on the job, learning on the job <laughs> in a situation like this. Mm, yeah. 
Oof. So what happens, Chip? Who, who's the, who's going to be the next head coach of the Texas Longhorns, or who who at least is in the conversation? Well, there's a group of big money guys, powerful big money guys, who want Tom Herman, a uh, former grad assistant at Texas, a guy they feel comfortable with, um, who's who's won. You know, I mean, won some big games. Now he's lost a couple games this year at the Navy and SMU that made everyone go, ugh. Mm. But but. You know, that's a guy who uh, the I think the Texas um, big money guys feel comfortable with. Now, school president Greg Fenvis, I'm hearing, may want his own guy. And that, that would set up a whole other set of, you know, fights internally. So any, inc- who, who, uh, any, any thoughts on who his own guy might be? Yeah. No, no. Oh, I don't think he's gotten that far because he, I think he, he believed that, you know, he was bringing Charlie back. And what? now they're... Yeah. yeah, which if you're around this program, what kind of guy do they need? Because I felt like a guy like Charlie Strong, who was disciplined, who was, you know, going to get the bad apples out of the program, was was important. What what do they need? That's what's so frustrating. I mean, Charlie represented so much of what Texas needed. Hmm. I mean, he he cleaned up the program. He he stocked the cupboard. Um, he just couldn't get his you know offense and defense. Uh, pulled together at the same time, and, you know, he was slow to react on coaching uh, decisions and then, you know, demoted play callers during the season each of the past two years and just had some embarrassing losses capped by Kansas. And that's the guy. Look, Texas, you know, the the fan base, the big money guys can handle hard-fought, tough losses. They cannot handle embarrassment, and there have been 10 losses of 18 points or more. And the loss to Kansas, who they had not lost to since 1938, wow. and it was a 19-game Big 12 losing streak. I mean, it just it, it was like the bottom fell out Saturday night. Chip, before you go, we got to keep it tight because we're up against it here. Say, um, I don't know, 10 years from now, we're in New Orleans at the Superdome, and Teak and I are there. We're, we're there for the national championship game. That's even where it is. I don't know. We're just this fictitious scenario. And we meet up at a bar. We're having a scotch, and we're reflecting on, you know, 10 years prior – Charlie Strong's ouster. Did he get screwed? I mean, will this be remembered as him getting unfairly treated, or is yeah, this like kind of what he earned? Like Ty Willingham. Like, yeah, a little bit like Ty Notre Dame, yeah. Well, I don't think anyone realized, especially Charlie, how bad off Texas was when he took over that job. I mean, Steve Patterson will go down as one of the worst athletic directors probably in Big 12 history. Uh, he hired Charlie Strong, but then didn't give him what he needed. You know, didn't give him money for quality control coaches, fought him tooth and tail on, on budget cuts, all this stuff. I mean, it's just been a comedy of errors in terms of the leadership at the school that Charlie walked to. Mm. I mean, lack of leadership is more like it. 